Hi, I'm just thinking about Passover, probably a lot like you getting ready for it in the house. We want to talk a little bit about what it means to have a Passover Seder and how to make it meaningful. Because the idea is to relive the Exodus. That's what we're supposed to do, to feel as if we ourselves left Egypt. Now, by the way, did you know they ate matzah in Egypt? Many people think it was invented when they left. But if you read the Torah carefully, it tells you they ate the matzah, the maror, the bitter herbs, and the Pesach, the Passover offering that they gave that night as they left out of Egypt. So we're going to talk about how do you make that Seder meaningful in your lives. Because by the way, people who really feel it, to imagine someone who survived the Holocaust, they, they could tell you what it means to be enslaved and then have freedom. You could talk to somebody who left Iran following the fall of the Shah and what it meant to be enslaved and then free. You could talk to somebody who has an addiction and to know what it means to be enslaved every day and to want freedom and how do you work towards that. But your task is going to be how to create a Seder in which people feel as if they left each and every one. That's the mitzvah, to feel as if we ourselves left Egypt. So you might go around the table, you might ask each individual to give a modern plague that exists in our world today, and is there anything we can do about that? So we're going to talk about a couple of other possible rituals. So for example, in the Seder, you're going to, at the beginning, take out the three matzot. And you're going to, have to be asked to break the middle matzah, right? We take out the middle matzah. And you're supposed to break it in half, just like this. Oh. <laughs> it never breaks in half, exactly, and that's the point. So which one do we put back, and which one becomes the afikoman? The small one we're going to put back into the middle. And those three are inside their cover, and this one is going to become the afikoman. You're going to take whatever you use to wrap it, you're going to wrap it up, and you're going to hide it. And we hide it, why? To keep the children awake, actually. And they're going to find this. The larger piece symbolizes redemption and freedom. That's the great hope that we want to symbolize. So you have to figure out how to make them feel that sense of redemption. And then, of course, there is the cup of Elijah. The second half of the Seder. By the way, did you know there is a second half of the Seder? I bet some of you don't know that. But after the meal, we come back for two more cups of wine. And part of that is the cup of Elijah, which begins empty, by the way. It's supposed to be empty until this part, right before the fourth cup. What do you do? You pass it around and have each person take from their cup of wine, pour a little bit in here, and as they do, they should be thinking about how can they help bring about the Messianic era, the symbol of Elijah, to make the world a better place. What actions will they do in the coming year? to make that difference. Now to make a Seder relevant, you have to do work, you have to prepare for it, and very important, you have to have a good Haggadah. I happen to love these, each one a little bit different. This one, a different night, and a night to remember. You can order these online, very easy to get, but find a Haggadah, find something that works for you, and what I want you all to try and do is make this a Passover Seder of meaning and relevance, one in which you can become free with everybody, to feel that sense of redemption, to understand what Passover is really about. I want to wish you a hug, Sameach Lekashir, to have a good and happy Passover.